Hi, I'm Nicole Scott with BNetTV.com. Down here at GSMA in Barcelona, I am with James Pierce from DotMovi. How are you today? Very well, thanks, Nicole. Now, can you tell me a little bit about DotMovi? Of course. So DotMovi is the top-level domain for mobile. Mm -hmm. So if you see a website that ends with a DotMovi, then you know that's a mobile website. It's a site that's been designed for people on the mo move, and people can access that on their phone with confidence that the site is going to be for them and is going to work well with that handset. Now, obviously, mobile web is a huge thing here at sure. GSMA. What initiatives are you, are, are you moving forward in order to make it a more creative and accessible user experience? Sure, absolutely. I mean, we have a lot more responsibilities than just providing the domain mm -hmm. for people to run the sites on. We also want to encourage people to actually create content. We want to talk to them about how to you know, monetize their content, make business out of running mobile websites, and we provide them with the technical tools and the resources and the education that they need in order to find out about mobile and find out how to get into that world. Specifically at this show we've uh, launched a, a product called Device Atlas and Device Atlas is a database of the world's mobile phones. This, if you're developing a mobile website, is very important information to have because you obviously want your site to look good, regardless of whether it's an iPhone or a lower-end handset from a few years ago. And so the websites tend to adapt the content so that they work well on different handsets. And to do that, you need to know what those phones are and what their physical characteristics are and so on. So our database provides... Uh, a resource which lets people to access, uh, allows people to access that information and make the user's experience when they're visiting that site, regardless of the phone, a much better one. Now, can, can you comment a little bit about business models? You mentioned advertising and, and yes. monetizing now. Yes. To me, there's pretty much a new winning business model every show. Sure. How do you know and what's the, what's the flavor of the moment? <laughs> well, I certainly think that mobile advertising, from a mobile web point of view, uh, is, is starting to come of age. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen, uh, you know, companies like AdMob make a real uh, sort of inroads into that market and they're writing some pretty big checks every month to people mm -hmm. who are, you know, publishing uh, adverts on their websites. And uh, there are others like them and there's been a certain amount of consolidation already in that market. You know, some of the smaller advertising companies are being, being bought up. It's obviously a hot, hot area. And surely a sign of things to come. I mean, I think there's a lot more to be done there in around contextualization of ads, embedding ads into search, and so on. Advertising is definitely you know, one to keep an eye on. M-commerce, which is, uh, I guess, the other big dollar-sized si or dollar-shaped symbol at the end of the tunnel is, is the other one. But that's a little bit further behind. I would say that uh, M-commerce has got a lot more maturing to do in terms of the technology, in terms of the business model. Does the network operator or the carrier get involved with an M-commerce transaction and so on? And uh, I think there's a lot more work to be done there amongst the industry, you know, the, the, the uh, alignment of forces that will dictate how that plays out. But certainly from the site owner's point of view, and in a sense we represent people who are running sites and, and, and trying to get their businesses off the ground, uh, anything that encourages that grassroots, uh, you know, the economics of the grassroots community are very uh, important to us. Are a lot of our investors, uh, the investors in the .mobi company, are network operators, they are telecoms companies of fairly large size, but in a way we're trying to support the, the, the community of people because that's what made the web successful. It was the small sites, the small businesses, people just getting on there and doing it, and we need to democratize and demystify that process for the mobile web as well. Speaking on carriers and everything that you just commented on, North America versus Europe, where do you see the differences or are, are the problems universal? We don't think about that split, to be perfectly honest. We don't see it quite as black and white as other sectors of the, the telecoms industry might do. Um, we think that, yes, it is a World Wide Web, and we're seeing just as much innovation, uh, both technically and economically, in the U.S. environment as we're seeing in Europe. Now, naturally, you know, the operators are using different technologies in terms of the handsets and the, uh, the, the billing models and the tariff kind of structures are different in the two continents. But frankly, at a grassroots level, we're seeing the same kind of innovation on sites and on advertising you know, across the world. So I, I, guess, I guess I say I, I would say I don't see that split as clearly as, as others maybe do. China, huge amount of growth in the mobile web in China. Uh, and in fact, on a country by country basis, we have more Chinese .mobi domains than anywhere else after the US. So they're second uh, in terms of the growth of content. And uh, you know that's, that's obviously growing at a great rate as well. So 
It is genuinely a worldwide phenomenon, uh, and mobile is that, right? Mobile is a global social network. You know, it's the biggest social network out there, and uh, yeah, it spans boundaries and borders very easily. Now, can you just break it down for our viewers a little bit? There's there's a lot of different ways you can go onto the mobile web. You can mm -hmm. go to websites, and I see M dot seems to be the flavor of the mm -hmm. month right now in America. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on the strengths of going with a dot mobile? Sure. Uh, I mean, there are lots of conventions around, uh, so many conventions that they are almost not conventions. Uh, and if you look at a lot of the big brands, they've chosen to do, you know, mobile dot, or they've done forward slash mobile, or WAP dot, or M dot, and obviously there's dot mobi as well. I would say that dot mobi is the only one that really has kind of a, a responsible backing behind it. Uh, we're providing the tools and that trustworthy professionalism to, to to helping people to do this. I mean, M dot, yeah, it may mean something to to the internet crowd or the you know the, the kind of the uh, thought uh, sorry the the the, 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 the basic user probably doesn't understand what an M necessarily means my mother doesn't know what an M dot means I mean in the internet geek crowd yeah, yeah. It, 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 it means something but what we think is that the mobile web isn't just about those people it's about everybody it's about you know the the consumer at large uh, and what we hope is the dot mobi convention becomes one that they can trust um, there are by the way you know many times more dot mobi domains than there are uh, M dots you know, dot com sites are not a trustworthy experience uh, on the mobile uh, medium and so so um, I guess if I'm a brand and I'm launching a site, I probably don't want to choose between one and the other. I would probably do both, to be perfectly honest. You know, I don't have the privilege of saying I'm only going to go with M. Dot or I'm only going to go with Dot Mobi. These people uh, are trying to open up as much traffic as possible, and uh, yeah, if you can advertise and you can make people discover your content uh, through all of these different means, then then that's great. But we think that Dot Mobi is probably the one that will resonate the most with the consumer in the street because you know. It it does what it says on the tin, M-O-B-I, it spells out, you know, half of the word, yeah. uh, whereas M dot is a little bit cryptic and people don't necessarily understand what it means outside certain circles. So, um, yeah, we don't see it as any sort of holy war or, or battle. I think all of these things have a place. It's a brand choice. If people want to run a site with whatever URL they want, that's their decision. But we do think that Don Moby will have the, the, the better brand recognition amongst the consumers, ultimately. Well, fantastic, James. Thank okay. you so much for all the comments and a little bit of education on Don Moby. Sure. This has been James Pierce with Dot Mobi, and I'm Nicole Scott down here at, three, at GSMA in Barcelona. <laughs>